What's up everyone, Michael Gay Spirit Shard here with impressions of you for Bitblaster XL, a very simple kind of asteroid style arcade game. It's fairly cheap, I think it's like a dollar or something like that, so keep kind of putting that in my impressions. Anyways, not very complicated art style as you can see in the background, so we're going to go ahead and look at the options first. The menu does have full mouse support and it also has gamepad and keyboard support. Now one thing that's kind of interesting about the menus I probably mentioned is that if you hit the buttons on here, it shows it for the gamepad, but that's actually the key as well for the keyboard. So like for music, if I hit X, that's how you activate that. Anyway, so the options, you have music, sound effects, and that's kind of it. You also have a tweet button, which is to tweets to the developer, which is kind of strange. I don't, I haven't clicked on it because I don't really interact with a lot of social media stuff right now, but yeah, so that's kind of weird. Some people have complained about it as in when you start up the game, it actually advertises for his other games. And I kind of want to mention right off the bat that that's kind of annoying in a paid game. Like, even though it's advertising its own game, kind of like saying, hey, here's other games you could pay for. It's, it, seem, it feels kind of scummy and just, it breaks the flow of starting up a game and just playing. And so I don't really personally like that. I mean, it's not something that really bothers me, I will say, but it is something that's kind of annoying. A lot of people have complained about it. Normally I wouldn't mention something like that because it's just kind of like, whatever, whatever. You just click a button, it skips it. But People have complained about it on the forum, so I felt like it was kind of worth noting. Anyway, so for the options, I would like to see volume sliders and a windowed option. I mean, I don't need very many graphics options or anything like that. Like, I'm fine with everything else being kind of whatever, but having the option to go into a windowed would be nice. And not having that is kind of annoying. And also, it just starts up automatically in full screen, so maybe some resolution options or something like that along those lines. That would be, that would be nice, because what if it doesn't start up exactly how you need it or something like that? So that's kind of annoying. Not that big of a deal, but I would like to have windowed mode nonetheless. Anyway, let's go ahead and go into the game. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the mouse aside. There we go. So here we are. So we get different ships. So you select your ships. I have three of them unlocked, and then you can unlock several other ones. I'm going to go ahead and select this one. Here you can see you actually have three different stats, and each ship has different stats on them. So this one has the, on the left side, it has two shooting, two speed, and then one health. The health is actually how many times you can get hit and stay alive. And so this ship has zero, which means if it gets hit, it dies. But yeah, we have a shield with this one, so we're gonna go ahead and take this one. This is the one you start off on, so it's a good example. Anyway, so here we are in the game. You use your left and right arrow keys, or A and D, to move left and right. Um, it also has gamepad support. For me, it used the joystick. I would like to see it use the D-pad, but nonetheless, you can't really change the options for the uh, key bindings, which is quite depressing. And then you also have the space for a boost, which is... Interesting, I don't really use it all too often because normally I'm playing the speedy ships, which means I don't nearly need boost. Anyway, so what are you doing? So you're flying around in this little tiny space, destroying these, I guess what you would assume are asteroids, and collecting these little orbs and trying to get the highest score possible. You're also collecting power-ups, which give you different weapons. And there's a nice variety of weapons as well. When I was playing originally, I played for about 25 minutes in my first session and then tried recording and failed epically, but <laughs> more on that later. Um, yeah, so I basically was playing and I was like, oh yeah, so I've seen like five or six different weapons, maybe there's more, I don't know, and then it would be like, show me a new one, I was like, oh, well this is interesting, and each of the weapons kind of feel interesting in the way that they, they mechanically work, but one of the interesting mechanics that I actually kind of at first didn't like, but actually like now that I've been playing it for a little bit, because it's kind of added a dynamic element that I didn't think the game would really have, I'm also playing terribly, I apologize for that, is you actually have limited ammo, and the game automatically fires for you, there is no fire button, so... Don't be looking at me like I'm an idiot just constantly firing at nothing. No, the game actually automatically fires for you. Now at first, I found that to be extremely annoying. I'm like, oh, I would like to have this control because, you know, people having more control is never a bad thing. I still don't think that having control of the bullets would be a bad thing. However, with the limited ammo counter that you'll see in the top left, or top left-ish, is that you'll actually have kind of sort of a time limit, in a sense. As in, when you collect power-ups and you collect these little orbs, you get more ammo. And so what I found that I'm actually doing, instead of actually focusing on destroying things and getting the highest amount of points possible, I've actually found that I'm just dodging trying to collect these little orbs and the power-ups, because the power-ups actually give you ammo as well. So I found that that's actually where the main mechanic comes from. Not necessarily the flying around and destroying stuff, but the actual, the mechanic of trying to keep your ammo going. Now I'm going to go back and select my other ship, because I think I'm better with the other ship. I do, I do better with this, because it's faster. Even though I can't get hit, it's faster, so I just... I just mentally work better with it for some reason. Although, now that I said that, I'm probably going to crash a bunch. Anyways, yeah. So the ammo mechanic has actually introduced something that I thought was really weird. Like, it's it's a mechanic that I didn't think I would actually like, but I don't know if that was intentional. I think that was more of a, I'm making it kind of simple thing, so it's just automatically going to shoot for you sort of thing. I don't really think it was mechanically in depth, but it kind of worked out for him in the end. And the boost mechanic is interesting as well, as in I end up using it more the more I play it. 
As in, it's like, oh, I need the ammo real quick and I just need to get here. Or, like, maybe there's a bullet going on. Now, another thing is the farther you get, the higher the score you get and the longer you're alive, the more different types of enemies and stuff that it shows. Now, there's not a big variety of enemies. Like, there's, like, five types of enemies that you'll show. I just ran straight into that. I don't know why. And so there's, like, a little ship that'll fly by. There's a bomb. There's another type of enemy ship thing. And that's, that's pretty much it. Like, the game doesn't have very much content. But then again, it is very, very cheap. So, yeah, so the gameplay loop, I find entertaining. It's it's a simple little arcade game, and for its cheap price, it's kind of fun. And the weapons are variety, has enough variety that it keeps things interesting. And there are some that I'm like, oh yeah, I really like this one. Like, I like this heat-seeking one, because it makes things simple to where I can just kind of focus on going around and collecting the orbs without worrying about running into things and not actually hitting anything. But then there's this M thing to which I don't really like this one, because it just shoots forward and backwards, and it's not very, very helpful. But the thing is, I end up picking these up because they actually give ammo as well. Like, the ammo packs are not quite enough to keep things going, and so I'll pick up a power-up to be like, hey, I need this extra, like, 10 ammo or something like that. So, you know, it keeps it up. And each different weapon actually has a different, oops, different ammo cost as well. So one weapon will actually cost, like, 10 ammo per shot, and another one will cost fire or five while it's firing, but it fires really slow. So maybe it's actually better for preservation. And I've actually found myself like, oh, I want to pick up this power f power up first, but I want to pick up this one second because it uses less ammo. And so I've kind of like been strategizing, strategizing my score patterns and just trying to keep my ammo alive. Now, some people could play this in like different play styles as in you could play it to kind of like be the destroyer and just kind of destroy as much plus stuff as possible. Or you could play it like me and just try and go around and use it as kind of a collect-a-thon thing and just if you end up destroying things on the way, that's that's kind of how it goes. And I found that that's the best way that I play this game. But there are different ways to play it. And that's that's pretty much the mechanics in a nutshell. There's not really much to it, as in it's a very, very simple game and not, not very expensive either, as I said. So let's talk about aesthetics. So the music is quite nice. I did mention that I would like to have volume sliders and stuff like that as well. And there's a reason for that. It's because the music is fairly loud and I would like to be able to turn it down a little bit. And I can't really do that without turning it off. So once I was playing the game for a little bit, I ended up just turning it off. And the sound effects in the game are actually quite nice, along with the aesthetic. Like, the aesthetic is simple, and it works. It's nothing, like, mind-blowing or anything like that. Like, it's, it's very simple for a reason. But it's enough that I can convey what's going on exactly when I need it to. And I'm obviously recording right now, and I'm just playing terrible. I'm terrible at these types of games in, in general. Like, this control scheme is not something I'm used to. However, others might might be better with it. Yeah, so the game the game looks nice and it performs really well. It's probably one of the lightest games I've ever played. So it's like super light on my CPU and all that. So it doesn't really take a lot to run. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So it kind of, it keeps itself interesting as in, I don't know if it has like a dynamic lock, unlock system. It does have some progression as in when you're playing the game, I think we've seen it maybe once. I wasn't really paying attention too much. But you end up destroying stuff, and then every once in a while it has a chance of dropping a coin or something like that, and then you can use that to unlock other ships, and those other ships are going to be slightly different playstyles, and then I, I kind of want to see how far I can get right now, so I don't really want to blow myself up. But when I inevitably do that, go ahead and hit back, and we'll end up selecting another ship. So one thing that's interesting is... Go ahead and select this one. One thing that's interesting is different ships will actually have slightly different playstyles, and you might want to like try and mix up your strategies to kind of get the high score. And it does have a leaderboard if we end up finishing the mission. So this one's really slow and boring. This is one you'd actually use to boost a lot on, but it can take a lot of hits. But if you run into a wall and you have a shield, it'll just blow you up instantly, so it just kills you. But if you hit X here, you actually have leaderboards. I'm not going to open it up because it brings up the Stu Vumble and that opens up a whole nother issue type of thing. But yeah, and it also has a tweet button that you can tweet if you wanted to. I don't, I don't know why. I just ignore that stuff. But some people might find that annoying. I personally don't mind it. I know people have been up in arms about that in a lot of games, and, like, I just don't really care. But that's that's kind of it. So, like, let's talk about a conclusion to this, I guess. As in, I find it enjoyable. This isn't something I would personally buy. As in, wow, not only am I terrible at this type of game, but I like to have smaller games to kind of play whenever I'm doing something that's maybe not going to require a lot of attention. Like, this is something I'd play during, like, a podcast or something to where I cannot sit still at all. Like, that is not a thing I can do. So I'm constantly moving. I'm constantly doing something. This is something that I would play play simple. Like, let's say I'm video rendering or something like that. That's when I actually originally played it. It was like, I was rendering video, and I'm like, all right, so I need a light game to play. And so I'd just play this in the background. Or let's say you just want a simple arcade game to play in between things. This would be not a bad pick. Or let's say you're really big into score attack. This might actually be a valuable choice because it does have a single leaderboard and you're like, oh yeah, I can get on top. We just 
got a uh, key so I can actually unlock a new ship for you guys. Yeah, let's do it. Hit Y. The key bindings are a little confusing. Yeah, I got an achievement for that as well. Yay! I unlocked a basically a ship that's better than the rest of them. Maybe it gets progressively better. That might be interesting. But yeah, so the value proposition is going to be whether you like this type of game or not, really. As in, are you willing to pay like a dollar for a simple little game that you'll play for maybe 10 minutes at a time, 20 minutes at max, and just kind of come back to every once in a while? That's if you do come back to it. For me personally, cheap games like that, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, that seems reasonable. If this is your type of jam and you like these types of games and you don't already have too many of them, then yeah, it's not a bad pick. As in, this is something that would be quite relaxing just play when you're casually going. I don't really find it too engaging for the score attack element, although I don't, I'm not really big of, big on the score attack stuff in the first place, but yeah, so that's kind of my conclusion as it, it gets interesting in the different enemies. I wish I could get a little bit farther and I'm just, I'm just not playing well today. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could get a little bit farther to show you guys some other stuff, but that's kind of my conclusion is if you like this type of game and you're willing to pay like a really cheap price for something that you might play for 10 to 15 minutes at a time, it's something that you could end up coming back to in the future and just playing every once in a while. Anyways, this has been Michael aka Spirit Shard with a Bit Blaster XL. Fairly simple asteroid style arcade game that's super cheap and stuff like that. It's got a nice little aesthetic to it and it has nice sound effects and that's that's kind of it. It's very simple. It's relaxing as well even though I just completely suck at it. It has enough variety to keep me interested for a little while. Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, what do you guys think of these little tiny arcade games? Are they fun? Are they not? If you end up checking the game out, what do you think of it? Are there things that I missed? Are there more in-depth mechanics? Or do you think the game just isn't that great or something like that? Anyways, just leave the comments. I'll read them and I'll try to reply when I can. Anyways, thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video.